from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Thursday, June the 10th, 2021. Twelve Jewish Democrats out of a total of 25 who serve in the U.S. House of Representatives are asking for clarification from a fellow Democratic member of the House over recent remarks. Earlier this week, Elon Omar shared video of questions that she asked U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken in a virtual session, tweeting, we must have the same level of accountability and justice for all victims of crimes against humanity. We have seen unthinkable atrocities, she wrote, committed by the U.S., Hamas, Israel, Afghanistan, and the Taliban, grouping the U.S. and Israel in with terror groups. Well, yesterday, Representative Brad Schneider spearheaded a statement signed onto by fellow Jewish Democratic representatives Jake Auschenkloss, Ted Deutsch, Lois Frankel, Josh Gothheimer, Elaine Luria, Kathy Manning, Gerald Nadler, Dean Phillips, Kim Schreier, Brad Sherman, and Debbie Wasserman Schultz. The statement reads that equating the United States and Israel to Hamas and the Taliban is as offensive as it is misguided, ignoring the differences between democracies governed by the rule of law and contemptible organizations that engage in terrorism at best discredits one's intended argument and at worst reflects deep-seated prejudice. Further reading, the United States and Israel are imperfect and, like all democracies, at times deserving of critique, but false equivalencies give cover to terrorist groups. We urge Congresswoman Omar to clarify her words placing the U.S. and Israel in the same category as Hamas and the Taliban. Jewish organizations also responded to Omar's statement. CEO of the American Jewish Committee, David Harris, wrote, a member of Congress puts two vibrant democracies, the U.S. and Israel, in the same boat as two bloodthirsty terror groups, Hamas and the Taliban. Beyond shocking, beyond reprehensible. The OAS, the Organization of American States, which represents 35 countries in the Western Hemisphere, will name an envoy for monitoring and combating anti-Semitism. The Conference of Presidents of Major American Jewish Organizations welcomed the announcement by Secretary General Luis Almagro for recognizing the reality of the pernicious threat of anti-Semitism to the Jewish people and will rise to the occasion of fighting to neutralize it. They wrote, we urge more countries and institutions to do so as the world confronts the increasingly urgent challenge of Jew hatred. The government of Quebec adopted the IHRA, International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance's working definition of anti-Semitism, the third Canadian province to do so after Ontario and New Brunswick. Environment Minister Benoit Charette, who is also responsible for combating racism, told the National Assembly yesterday, violence, threats, and aggression experienced by our Quebec Jewish community have deplorably gained momentum these past weeks in our cities as well as on social media, adding it is our duty to take all the means possible in order to combat anti-Semitism. The IHRA definition includes hatred and discrimination against Jews as well as criticisms of Israel that go beyond what is acceptable applying double standards by requiring of it a behavior not expected or demanded of any other democratic nation. Jewish organizations in Canada and here in the U.S. and the Israeli government welcomed the move. And U.S. Senators Democrat Jackie Rosen and Republican James Lankford relaunched the Senate Bipartisan Task Force for Combating Anti-Semitism yesterday. Rosen and Langford originally founded and led the task force, the first of its kind collaboration, in 2019 with 38 members. The relaunch now has 56 members, equally across the aisle. Rosen said in recent weeks, we've seen attacks on Jewish communities and Jewish-owned places of business and foreign leaders who have invoked anti-Semitic conspiracies. 
As members of Congress, our responsibility to our neighbors, our friends, our community, and our children is to work together in a bipartisan way to prevent anti-Semitism before it starts and to call it out when it happens. Rosen, by the way, is the third female Jewish senator in U.S. history. Israel's Minister of Tourism, Orit Farkash HaKohen, announced today that Israel will ease its restrictions for regular individual tourists beginning next month. This with the country at a record low for new cases of the coronavirus. Farkash HaKohen tweeted easing conditions for the entry of vaccinated tourists and expanding entry for individual tourists to Israel would be starting on July the 1st. Groups of vaccinated tourists had been allowed into the country through the end of this month with strict limits on individual travelers. Taking a look now at our programming for tonight on JBS for Thursday, June the 10th at 7 o'clock. It's Talmud Study. At 8, a look at Israel in the media with Israeli Consul for Media Affairs in New York, al Mogalijis. At 8.30, award-winning Israeli actress and star of Shtisel and Unorthodox Shira Haas is joined by writer-director Ruthie Prebar to discuss their new film, Asia that tells the universal and timeless story of maternal love and loss. That's with Eric Goldman on Jewish Cinematheque. At 9, Mark Golub sits down with Miriam Peretz, who lost two sons in the war with Palestinians while each was serving in the IDF's elite Golani Brigade. That's on L'Chaim. At 10.20, Rabbi Nathan Lopez Cardozo talks about the Zionist dream, the Jewish people, and the state of Israel. And coming up next, Shachar Azani speaks with Chaviv Retig Gur, the Times of Israel's political correspondent, who shares his perspective and updates on Israel's new coalition government. And that's the JBS News Update for Thursday, June the 10th, 2021. I'm Tisha Bader. Stay healthy. Stay well.